Math is useful because it allows us to build bridges, allows us to fly across oceans in a matter of hours, and it even allows us to go to space. In this video, we'll be answering how many lines intersect four given lines in 3D. While this question won't help us necessarily get to space today, it's an easy to state kind of fun fact math question that involves some beautiful visualizations and some pretty high level math. To understand what the question is even asking, let's first look at an easier example. If I put one random line in 3D, how many lines go through that fixed line? It shouldn't be hard to convince yourself that there are actually infinitely many, because the given line is infinitely long and thin. In fact, if we pick a single point on the given line, there are infinitely many other lines that go through just that one point. Now, let's slightly up the complexity by asking how many lines intersect two given lines. Now, if the lines are right on top of each other, we're essentially given only one line, so we need to add a small restriction on the lines given to make the question more interesting. The real question we're going to ask is, how many lines intersect two given skew lines? See, lines are skew when they're not parallel with each other and they don't intersect each other, so they're separated and not going in the same direction. Even when this is the case, if there are only two given lines, we can easily form infinitely many lines going through both. We first pick a point on the first line, then we pick a point on the second line, and then we draw the line between the two points. Now, let's jump into some pretty sophisticated geometry. How many lines intersect three given skew lines? Already, jumping from two to three lines makes this question much more difficult. From looking at three given skew lines, it's kind of hard to even tell if there exists a single line that goes through all three. It should be a complete surprise when I tell you that, just like before, there are still infinitely many lines that intersect all three. Maybe even more surprising, when we jump to five random lines, most of the time there does not exist any lines going through all five. The most interesting question is when we have four given lines. Because most of the time, there is not infinitely many lines passing through all four, but there is also not zero. This is a cornerstone question in the field of enumerative geometry, and it is a great introduction to some higher level math. By the end of this video, you should be able to walk away with more than just an answer to the famous four line question. You should walk away with a good idea of why the answer is the magical number it is. Now, first, we're going to have to take a brief detour into the world of ruled surfaces. See, ruled surfaces are surfaces in 3D that you can form from lines. Imagine waving around a line in 3D that traces out a surface as it moves through space. One of the easiest examples of which is a cylinder. If we just take a vertical line and we wave it around in a circle on the ground, we trace out a cylinder. The vertical lines that lay on the surface of the cylinder are called its rulings. A great example of a ruled surface is ruled paper that you use to write on. And in fact, the faded lines that help guide your writing are examples of rulings on the paper. They're, they're examples of rulings on a plane. A topologist's example of a ruled surface might be a Mobius strip. See, a Mobius strip can be formed by waving a line around in a circle while you turn the line 180 degrees as it's moving. Now, it should not be a surprise that we need to know about surfaces comprised of lines when we're trying to count intersections of lines. But ruled surfaces are used for more than just our question, and particularly in architecture. A helicoid is a ruled surface that resembles a spiral staircase. Usually, we fatten some of the rulings in architecture like we do in a spiral staircase, and we make them into something like stairs. 
A great example of a ruled surface being used in architecture would be in the roof of the Warsaw Okada railway station in Poland. It resembles this beautiful ruled surface called a hyperbolic paraboloid. And one of the two rulings of the hyperbolic paraboloid are actually outlined on the roof. The most important ruled surface that we're going to need for our question is called a hyperboloid. Now, a hyperboloid, for our purpose, is a surface that kind of resembles a power plant. It is somewhat a mixture of a cone and a cylinder, but we only bend the generating lines slightly. Since ruled surfaces are formed from lines, picking a point on a ruled surface gives us a line on the surface that goes through that point. There are other lines that go through this point, but almost all of them will not be entirely contained on the surface. Hyperboloids are special because there are not one, but two distinct lines that go through any point on the surface. A hyperboloid has two distinct rulings that lay on it, making it a doubly ruled surface. This means that there are two distinct lines that you can wave around and make the same surface with. Hyperbolic paraboloids are the same in this way, as in they have two distinct rulings that you can form the surface with. Now, let's get back to the main course of the video. We're ready to use our newfound knowledge of ruled surfaces to tackle our intersecting lines question. The key ingredient we need is a theorem in geometry called Gallucci's theorem, which states that any three skew lines define a ruling of either a hyperboloid or a hyperbolic paraboloid. Most of the time, this is a hyperboloid, meaning we can always create a hyperboloid containing our three skew lines. The hyperboloid we get may be rotated in space and may come in many different forms, but they all more or less have the same shape. This theorem, at least to me, is quite surprising and quite satisfying to see visually. There's a special case where all three lines are parallel to the same plane, and in this case, we get a hyperbolic parabola. However, if we choose the lines at random, this is almost never the case. Let's see how our new theorem answers the question of how many lines intersect three given skew lines. Let's create three random lines and draw the hyperboloid that contains all of them. Remember that Gallucci's theorem says that they all lay on one of the two rulings of the hyperboloid. Let's take a look at both of these rulings side by side. Notice how the rulings on the left don't intersect with the three given lines, but the rulings on the right do. Let's remove the given lines for a second and take a look at how a line on the right overlaps with the ruling on the left. The line from the second ruling intersects nearly all the other lines on this ruling. And in fact, if I could draw the entire infinite length of the yellow line and hyperboloid, you would see that it does in fact intersect every single line on the opposite ruling exactly once. Since all three of our given lines are on one of the rulings, we now know that any line on the opposite ruling intersects all three of our given lines. This is how we know there are infinitely many lines intersecting three given lines. Even in our special case of a hyperbolic paraboloid, the three given lines lay on one ruling and any line on the opposite ruling intersects all three given lines. Now that we know that there are infinitely many lines that intersect three given lines, the question of how many lines intersect four lines actually becomes much easier to tackle. Our first step is to take any three of the four given lines and create a hyperboloid from them. Recall that any line that intersects those three must also live on the hyperboloid on the opposite ruling. And because of this, if the fourth line does not intersect the hyperboloid at all, we know there are actually no lines that go through all four of the given lines. However, if we choose our lines at random, this will almost never happen. If the fourth line intersects the hyperboloid at exactly one point, then there is exactly one line that goes through all four given lines. 
and it is given by the line from the opposite ruling on the hyperboloid that goes through the point that the fourth line intersects the hyperboloid at. Again, this is not likely when we pick our lines at random. The last situation that is not very likely is when the fourth line lays on the hyperboloid on the same ruling as the other three. And when this is the case, there are still infinitely many solutions given by the opposite ruling of the hyperboloid. The case that really matters, and happens most of the time, is that we pick a line that goes through the hyperboloid at two points. When this happens, there are exactly two lines that intersect all four given lines. And they're given by the lines on the opposite ruling of the hyperboloid that go through the two points given. The magic number here is two, the number of lines that most of the time pass through four given lines is two. This unintuitive and remarkable fact of enumerative geometry inspires the branch of mathematics called Schubert calculus. Schubert calculus attempts to understand the intersections of various geometric objects. And you can answer amazing questions like, how many lines lie on an arbitrary cubic surface? And the answer somehow being 27. If you liked this video and you would like to see more, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching.